Welcome to my presentation to Expo uh, 2022, the virtual conference. My name is Dr. Marc Dupuy. I'm a consultant. I have my own uh, consulting company called Genisim. Uh, the subject of the presentation is the key performance indicator of the best technology available today on the market. Um, it was uh, presented in an article in the magazine World Aluminium Journal. It is uh, being presented for the first time in a publicly uh, in this presentation. So the 13 uh, technology in question are listed here. Um, some are only prototypes. Uh, many are been already deployed. Some in the demonstration phase, some in full smelter. So I will cover them one by one. I will first introduce the KPI for in two uh, main uh, graphs. One is for the production. So that the one, of course, obviously the, the most important uh, indicator is the production of a cell per day. So uh, of course it's related to amperage, but uh, there's a current efficiency that uh, disperses a bit uh, the data. So uh, the most productive uh, is the um, is the new 600. That means that the 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 new 600 uh, is a better current efficiency than the semi uh, SY 600. For the same amperage, and and this scale is covering from 400 to maximum 600 kilohertz. And for the for the specific production that is specified in the, the number here. And the second way, so uh, one thing is that of course the best the current efficiency uh, you are above the the fit. So AP60 is uh, above the fit. To have better current efficiency than average, the Russian RA five fifty something, and when you are below the fit, then it means you have a worse current efficiency than the average, like this uh, semi five hundred kilo cell. The second and key indicator is the uh, energy consumption. Here, the, the the winner by far is the HAL four E Ultra at eleven point seven. That is really also very set apart from the, the rest by the fact that uh, the current efficiency here uh, is uh, pu pushing down the, of course, the energy consumption. So this the hull is very away from the fit. So it's mean that he has a much better current efficiency than the group here. The DX plus ultra same thing. The, Again, the AP60 and RA550 in a, a group of a very good efficiency cell. And again, you can see this Y500 being way above the fit, so worse current efficiency than average for the, and the GANI the GY530 something and the, 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 the semi SY600. So in, in general, the, the, the Chinese technology, they have worse current efficiency than the average. Uh, and except for the new 600 that is on the fit. Okay, so this is the two way to present the key uh, the key performance indicator. Now I will present them one by one, technology by technology, and present uh, the technology itself. So the first group presented is the HAL 4E and HAL 4E Ultra. They are you can see in demonstration phase for the HAL 4E because there's 48 putts in operation. For HAL 4E Ultra, there's only 12 putts. So the KPI are based on those, uh, those numbers of cell. And so I will not present them in, in detail because I don't have much time. And I will not cover this text because again, I don't have much time. It essentially describes uh, the KPI and the date where it was put in operation and where. So instead, I will cover directly the uh, the slide I have for the showing the technology. So this is the building of uh, where the the prototypes or the the demonstration is taking place in in this building here. So it 
create one building for the, the, the main line and the return line. I will show more here in this. So you can see from this view from the floor, this is it during the construction. So that's the uh, one, the line going that direction. And then the return line is across the, the center of the building. Is, you can see the return line coming back here. This is the picture of during the pre heat So you can see, so from this angle, it looks very standard technology, four stop anode in line, one rod per carbon block. And this is uh, the view uh, of the same building in, during the operation of the uh, cell. So you can see it's a very clean building, very nice technology for sure. And that's the view of the anode here. With the slots in. So it's a, again, the anode looks very typical. So the, the secret for the success of this technology is, is hidden in the bar or in the control logic, but nothing we can see obvious from this, the picture. Okay, the control logic is quite unique. It is uh, on top here, you have the normal control logic. So you have the cell controller, the real cell, and then the, the recording of the, the the voltage come back to the cell controller and takes some decision about uh, moving the ECD, so moving the, the bridge or, or feeding alumina. Uh, everything that is done here is unique to this technology, such as uh, uh, here you have a cell simulator and here you have a loop to create a digital twin and the digital twin will predict the future state of that cell. And that uh, future state will be fed to the controller that will take action, preventive action. Uh, so that's the extra uh, uh, loop here that is uh, possible uh, by the creation of a digital twin. So this is the standard control logic that everybody else is using. This is the, the data you get. So here you have the cell voltage. The cell voltage that is recorded here is too low. So that's when they are not recording 100% of the pot to pot voltage for the control. But it's not unique for the, to this technology. Extra measurement of the Ardon are example here, uh, measuring the uh, bad superheat and uh, uh, excess LF3 through this apparatus called Fiber Lab. Recording the uh, individual anode uh, rod current either manually or through inserting a measurement device in, in the rod itself. Detecting if the feeder is, is touching the, the bat, so if the hole is open. Two different way here, uh, by detecting the temperature down here or by detecting if the full motion was, of the piston was uh, took place. If, if something is blocking the motion that that, uh, that will be detected here. So that's two ways to, to know the feeder is uh, always open or not. So this is the loop. So all those measurements are coming here from the process. And this loop is the adjustment of the simulation to the actual data coming from the real cell. And the, the fact that you're doing this loop, uh, you you are adjusting the model to represent the real cell state. So that means that you have developed a digital twin of your cell. And the estimator is a, a Kalman filter that is a, a way to fit the data to the cell uh, prediction of the simulation. Okay, so, so once you have that, here you are some equation of the cell simulator. And you have the data from the past, but the red is a prediction of the the digital twin for the immediate future state of the cell. And you that information will be fed to the cell controller, and he will take some action, preventive action, based on this prediction of the future state of the cell. This is the CAD of of the technology that's out for you. Uh, nothing special from this point of view. You can see the number of risers. You can see the part of the bus bar. Obviously, we don't see the bus bar, but that's a part of the secret of the technology. 
and then the, the fact that this bar, bar is very efficient is presented in this uh, here uh, sketch showing that uh, the, uh, the half floor E for some AC, AC go, going from two centimeters to 3.5 is very much more stable than the previous technology, the HAL uh, uh, 300. So we don't know where they are operating uh, on that scale, but uh, based on the data they are publishing on very low energy consumption, they must be at least in the middle of that scale here, so below three centimeters. This is a schematic of the modeling technology they are using for the heat balance. So that's ANSYS based. So you have a choice of three, a slice, a quarter, a quarter. You feed that to ANSYS workbenching and you get some solution. And you use obviously the heat balance, so resulting heat balance to improve the, the cell lining. So that's quite typical, uh, nothing special there. And here it's a, uh, they have also published uh, ventilation results, ventilation modeling. So here I took what they have published, I mirror and to give a good feeling of the technology, uh, how the building is, is constructed, the middle pillar supporting the cranes on this side and this side. And then obviously the, the mirroring is not good for the, the riser will not show on one of the two sides of course, because the, the direction of the current is, is opposite, but uh, everything else is, is quite correct in terms of how the building is, is built. Okay, next technology is the APXC from Rio Tinto. XC means low energy consumption. That's why this group of a cell that I'm presenting first is the low energy consumption part. So I will skip this and that's it picture of the uh, the prototypes in Saint Jean de Maurienne LRF that's the view of the experimental center and the building for where they are doing the R&D right there and that's the view of the, uh, the construction of the smelter in Vietnam where this technology will be used eventually I, I'm not up to date where they are in the construction, and that's a fairly old picture already. So I don't have uh, up to date information for this. This is a view of the cell controller and the control system. That part is called radar, that is uh, to assess the, the condition of the cell or report to a second level. Let's see. Uh, and this is a view of the uh, the model, one of the models we are using for designing. It's called uh, Alucel, it's a multi-physics. And then this part is here, we can see the mesh for the, uh, the computing the magnetic field. And this is the geometry. And from that to the MAV, you can predict the bat metal interface that is shown here. And then they are doing measurement and comparing the other two in this paper that they have presented this. And they are also use the same model and you sell to, to get the flow from, from the MAV. And then you, you also have a component that is predicting the, uh, amina concentration in, in the cell. And you can adjust the feeder position to optimize the homogeneity of the, the amina concentration. They also have a ventilation model here we are presenting three level of ventilation model, the general smelter view, where you have the wind from weather, then from the boundary condition, the your solution of this one, you get boundary condition for a part of the, the section of the one of the platform. And then from the solution of this one, you can apply boundary condition on this very detailed uh, slice of one part. Okay, next is the GX Plus Ultra from EGA. So that's the last of the low energy consumption cell. That was the that the KPI report is only for the five cell that was uh, the prototype in the Eagle section. So that's the Eagle section. So there's five parts in that section. And that's where 
EGA is developing its cell technology. So they developed the DX uh, plus ultra there. And after that, they constructed the Alba line six with it. So that's the, the view of the Jebelani smelter and the circle here, indication of where the Eagle section is located. That's exactly this building here. And from the top, you can see the building here and then the rectifier for the extractor end. Because this building is part of that pot line. So, so with the, you, you see the extractor end, that's a, a booster section for that pot line where you, you, you EG is developing uh, cell technology. That's a picture of the preheat. So, again, from this point of view, you can not see much. It's again uh, one one carbon block per one uh, collectible uh, anode rod per carbon block for stop in line. That's the construction of uh, line six in Alba. This this view, and that's the inside the building where you can see the pot line of the, this technology. That's a view of the cell control of the DX plus ultra developed by EG. That is a quite uh, very one of the best cell controllers. That's the view of the the thermal electric modeling. Again, based on ANSYS. That's the anode only, half anode. Was uh, of the, that technology, so we can see the four stubbing line. And that's uh, another paper published uh, the uh, ventilation. So, the holding system, I would collect the, the, the result gas to get the uniform capture uh, and no uh, loss of HF. Okay, the next group is for, uh, for cell operating from 400 to 550 but not the low energy consumption, so more regular cell. So we have uh, the, the first group I'm going to present here is AP40, AP44, from the AP4X generic name. So the AP44 was a prototype that has been abandoned by my knowledge. They had five prototypes in operation for some time. And uh, but the AP40 is uh, at least three, no, three, three smelter for sure uh, is using this technology. Maybe four, I'm not sure about them yet, but uh, at least uh, kits mat, uh, uh, Alouette, and, and uh, Alma smelter are using this technology. Okay, so this is again some description of the KPI where it was done. Testing was done in Duncan for sure. That's a view of the kit map uh, smelter after the construction of the, the new technology AP40. That's the new the new smelter that was constructed on the same site, and that's what's left of the old pot soda bird pot line here, not being used anymore. Okay, and that's the picture of the technology that was developed for the ABSYS 4840, so the operator can carry this uh, this kind of phone, smartphone, to to follow the operation of the pot. And this is another view of the uh, Agicel multi-physics model for, for the AP4X. Then what is being shown here is the temperature and then the fact that the Coupled with the flow, so the temperature is not uniform on the sidewall because the flow is adjusting the ledge thickness differently at different locations. This is the prototyping of the AP44. That is a wider cell than AP3240. So it's, the pot shell was modified to be wider. That's the Alma smelter where the prototyping was done. And that's the view, uh, I just have a view of that pot shell that is wider than regular AP30 pot shell with the flow of the MHD solution. And from it, you can couple with the temperature and you can see downstream, the higher temperature in the middle, upstream in the corner. 
that's the ANSYS uh, AP44 model. The, what's more specific about this technology is the angle was very asymmetric, so because they, they moved the, the wall out and they take advantage of the extra space to have a longer angle, but they kept the the geometry of the stop the same. So I think that this anode was very asymmetric. Okay. The next is the DX plus that was used developed before the DX plus ultra. So that's more like a, a regular cell. This one is quite high, in fact, 13.4 kilowatt hour per kilogram. So it's uh, higher than the others. Right. Well, well, AP44 was quite bad. So that's maybe one of the reasons it was not, it's not in, in use. Or now they are developing AP42 instead of AP44, to my knowledge. Okay, so the DX Plus was prototyped in the same building before the DX Plus Ultra. Eagle section. That's the view of the uh, 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 ML. So this is the main alley, whatever. <laughs> the name of that smelter is ML for me at least. And so that's the pot line three. And that's the view of the building from the outside. And the plant view. So the two first pot line were constructed using the DX. That is the generation before that I'm not covering here. The DX plus was used for the, the pot line three that was longer and more amperage also into that uh, technology. Okay, in the middle is the, end, in the uh, carbon plant. And that's the view of the controller uh, that was published uh, for the DX plus. So you can see the feed. Very much overfeed, overfeed, normal feed, underfeed for the, the control logic. The solution of the MHD with the Aster Phoenix. This is a, a, a 3D MHD solver model. And the solution of the ANSYS thermal electric for the e pattern, the DX Plus. And as the net, I have the SY500, that is the uh, the um, semi technology operating at 500 kilohertz. And this is a view of one of those melter in the, uh, in China, of course. And that's a view of inside of this uh, technology at Y500. And then the CAD drawing of that, the building. Then that's the second level two uh, control system. Where you can supervise uh, all the parts. The modeling, so thermal electric and sys based again. And after that, yeah, I'm presenting the, the GAMI SY530. Uh, uh, so it was uh, one pot line was developed for that technology. So that's a fairly long pot. Seven riser for only 530 kilohertz. The other two, the Chinese technology operating uh, 600 kilohertz for the same type of seven riser design. That's the view of the construction of that single smelter using that technology. And that's a sketch of the control logic uh, of that uh, cell technology. That's uh, MHD run this uh, model of the another generation of the gaming cell technology and the thermal electric ANSYS base uh, of that technology. So, in general, you see that uh, everybody's using ANSYS for thermal electric. I'm kind of the, the original developer of that type of modeling technology on ANSYS, using ANSYS. Rusal has uh, developed the RA550, five prototypes only, right, not five anymore, but uh, now eight, but uh, at the time of the recording those uh, KPI, they were only five. That's the view of those uh, at, at that time five, most probably are two tails. 
and don't trust this picture because it was sh sh photoshopped. That it's not only one single beam like you can see here, because they also have published other picture and they also I was there on site so I know that this is a there's essentially three independent analog beams supported by a mechanical system so there's three of those section one per riser here you can see four analog rod connected to this beam and there's a flexible here and there. So this beam can move independently of the second one there. And then here you can see there's three like that. There's uh, one per riser and there's two. They are right. What's unique about this technology, they have two sets of riser, one upstream and then a second set downstream. This is a view of the control logic. And uh, so you can see an arrow change here on the ramp. So that's nothing special about this. This here you can see the the two set of riser, one here and one here facing each other. Three upstream, three downstream. The magnetic field is quite unique with this kind of uh, uh, riser, and that's the main uh, the mechanical model of the Pachel, and that's the CAD system of the uh, superstructure CAD model. And you can see again that we're facing a riser upstream and downstream, these three group. And here you can not where well, you can see the the support for the the motion of the beam. They are the mechanical system. So you can see there's six per side to, to be able to move independently the beam uh, in three in three sections. That's the modeling of the R A three hundred. And CIS base. So we don't have a model for the 550, but it's similar, I guess. And after that, I'm presenting the last three, so I don't have much time, so I will go fast. AP60, NUI 600, and uh, SAMI 600. The most successful of those three is clearly the, based on user group, the, the NUI 600, and the KPI also better. The AP60 is in development for the last 25 years, but up to now there's only 38 parts uh, in the demonstration line. So that's what I'm going to present now. So that's the building where there's 38 parts, and that's the inside. That's the anode. You can see the anode change. So the anode is the ones. In three subs in line per carbon block and two carbon blocks per rod. The again the controller it's a again an axis, so not necessarily unique to AP60. Axis has been used for all AP technology. Alicell has been used for developing all AP technology also. So this is a uh, result for the AP60, the uh, temperature solution here, and then the dot metal interface. Both solve that together. That's why it's called multi physics. So that's unique to AP te uh, technology development, this kind of multi physics model. I will cover this in quite detail at TMS in one week after this conference. Okay, the, the NUI 600, the most successful technology based on the usage, because it's been used in many smelters successfully. The, the next one coming is uh, one smelter only, been using one smelter. So this is a view of the seven riser pot with a very massive superstructure to support uh, the, the fact that this cell is quite long without middle support that you will see in the semi uh, the next uh, final one so that's one of the pot, pot room using that technology and this is a, a view from google earth of that single smelter having three pot line of that technology here two more here for a total of 1.2 or 92 million tons per year for that single smelter that is to my knowledge the biggest smelter 
of the industry. Okay, that's a sketch cat the drawing of the, the technology. The bus bar was published by uh, university where they analyze, they compare many bus bar, publish this picture of the, the NUI 600 bus bar. And NUI themselves, they have published the next picture that is the, the detail of the first uh, riser connection. So you can see here that is, there's one part coming underneath and one part going around. Uh, for that first riser, and you see here the the picture of that first uh, part of the bus bar published by by Nui themselves at PMS. So, so this is ANSYS detailed thermoelectric to predict the temperature, and more detailed than than a, a, a generic. Uh, this is more generic to build this to to calculate the magnetic field, and normally you. You impose the current in each section, or you assume the temperature and you calculate the, the the current in each part of the network. But this is more detailed for sure uh, calculation. Okay, this is a thermoelectric. I know uh, ANSYS base for the heat balance, a pot shell mechanical. For predicting the deflection of the pot shell, ensuring that the pot shell is strong enough. You can see from this that it is a straight wall here and then straight corner that is unique to this new technology in China. Normally, as I will see in the last one, Chinese they, they use a slope. This is the model of the superstructure that was kind of designed like a bridge. They ensure that there's no like not too much deflection on it and then that's a ventilation again to ensure that uh, you capturing the hf point so this is getting more common they use to design cells in the last one i'm a bit late but i'll try to finish fast the sy600 that is uh, from sami this is a view of the, the building where they have prototype 12 uh, of those cells and you can see the superstructure is not as massive, but they uh, they rely on the center support here. That's a view of the full uh, pot room using that technology, and the view of that single smelter using that technology. The thermoelectric modeling, mechanical potential deflection, and final conclusion. That uh, up to now we can see that uh, there's a saturation that for 600 kiloamps of the development because even if I I published this three years ago, it's still no news of any technology trying to develop any or project to public non project of anybody trying to get above 600 kiloamps. And there's a paper from Rio Tinto that argued that uh, there's no more incentive to, to go higher in, in, in amperage. That remains to be confirmed because uh, that's not the first time that people have uh, claimed that there's a limit. But that's the current state of uh, the industry as of today. Thank you very much for your attention.